Well, no, it was pretty hilarious when uh, a lot of the, the media last year were just so mad that McDermott wasn't giving them anything. Like, yeah. he's not, it's not his job. Yeah, of course he's not. It doesn't going matter. To. Like, I, I remember liking it too because we, we always. We always compare him to Reed because he came off of that tree. I can't remember one memorable Andy Reed conference because he doesn't give anybody anyway anything no. anyway. But interesting comparison. Click the bell to join hashtag nation. You want to try that one again? Ways or what ways does McDermott need to improve as a head coach? Challenging penalties, game management, clock management, timeout. Uh, with all the strides to improve the team, the facilities, the depth of roster, what does what is McDermott doing to improve? Uh, he gets the team ready to play, but he has not really offered much as far as a game day head coach going into his third season. He needs to take a step forward. Could I have two large double doubles and two angel cream donuts? Double doubles and two vanilla cream. Anything else? That's all. 6.59 at the window. Thank you. Let's see how this goes. Okay. What is the one knock on Reed? His clock management is atrocious. Oh, yeah, he's terrible. So yeah, if that's yeah. what McDermott <laughs> learned, we're in trouble if we got some close games this year. Well, and, and you know, everybody gets mad for Donovan McNabb a decade ago running out of bounds to end a game in a tie. But, I mean. It's the Bengals. I remember that. Yeah, but. Uh, he was an Andy Reid quarterback. Clock management has never been Reid's thing. You're absolutely right. Um, Wait, there's overtimes? <laughs> put this me, put me in the me. hall. I don't know what overtime is, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, to get back to McDermott. Uh, I think... That, does that worry you a little bit? What? Because it worries me a little bit. If, if, if it gets to the point where talent's in place, scheme is in place, philosophy's in place, and then he has to manage the game... If Reed was his mentor in that, no, I I think that I think the the overriding difference here is that uh, McDermott is not taking over DC responsibilities, although he did last year, right? I think he was just bored. It was for a game and things weren't going well, I think, right? I think he was just bored. But we, um, you know, that's the one thing about Reed is Reed's his own OC. Yes. So McDermott isn't. And you, that's very that's where the difference comes in. If you're talking about a defensive mind head coach versus a guy who has to manage the clock. So what that what that means is that is McDermott going to default it to the OC to manage the clock? Mm. I don't think we need to ask your opinion on that. Mm. Uh, that's what scares me. Well, or is he going to manage? Is that what Dorsey's there for? That's an interesting point. Yeah. So. I think I don't know. I think here's a couple a, a couple little wrinkles in what happened at the beginning of last year to what we're going to see at the beginning of this year. So gotcha. first off, let me ask you this because this makes a major difference as to how the game will be managed. Okay. Is Dable in the booth or is Dable on the sideline again? That's amazing. That's an amazing question because we had a we had a show last year uh, talking about Dable in the booth. Oh, wow, here we go. While I eat this, you can check this card out. We talked about Dable in the booth versus Dable on the field. How is that going to be very different? Now, he and started He started the year in the booth, didn't yeah, he? he? Did. Yeah. And then he came down to the field when Anderson got there. Not when, Mc, not when Allen started. Right. When Anderson got there, yeah. which is very weird that it happened in that situation. But that notwithstanding, um, I think he would be up in the booth and relay it to Dorsey. Or vice versa. I don't think they're both going to be on the field. Initially, my initial thought. I wouldn't. I would have him because whoever's in the booth can catch whoever's on the field missing. What he's what he's missing. Yeah. I mean, unless you want the former quarterback in Dorsey at field level to get the pace of the game to relay stuff to Dable upstairs because Dable might say, "Oh, we can do this." He's like, "No, no, no. That's not what he's seeing. This is what he's seeing." Mm -hmm. All right, we'll help him out and all this. I don't. That's amazing, though. I, I oh, well, I think Ooh, that makes a big booth. difference. It right? does make a huge difference because there's it creates a communication barrier once you put somebody up in the booth. I think it, it doesn't really delay it. I mean, the communication has to be so sharp. To begin oh with. yeah, absolutely. But when you talk about Dable's strengths, what is it? Quality control. Mm -hmm. Put him as far away from the field as you want. 
Let them sit up there. Let them sit up there and draw things out. I don't care. Put it on a cocktail napkin. His, his place she already looks like one anyway. It makes you wonder if, if when Dable walked in the season, McDermott had a binder with graph paper and highlighters. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan. I don't yeah. usually eat these, but yeah. 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 My yeah. cheat day. Because it ends in a Y. Listen, Mario, I've seen your legs. Every day is a cheat day. You've seen my what? I've seen your legs. Every day is a cheat day for you. My legs? Mm-hmm. I never skip leg day. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Listen, walking into the gym doesn't count as leg day. <laughs> you want to take, take one of these softballs out of my calf? Oh, God. <laughs> Daniel brings up a good question. I mean, I think the first thing that Bills fans want to see an improvement in is is the challenging, right? So the McDermott challenge thing mm-hmm. is not – he's not good at this, right? Well, it's just, it's, it, he has a very poor record on challenges. I understand that. But sometimes – sometimes you use a challenge um, – say this but sometimes coaches just use a challenge to get a break for a little bit maybe gather their thoughts gather their plan because it's, it's longer than a timeout it is longer than a timeout plus it'll use a timeout right. so you use a challenge and then you're trying to collect things start, maybe guys maybe teams driving on you maybe you're driving and you want to collect your thoughts before the th- crucial third down play or something all right here's what we're gonna do if we get it we don't get it blah, blah, well blah. yeah there's some times that where happens. we're some we're uh, we're a fair amount of strategery a little make up a word. A fair amount of strategy plays into it, but I, the fact remains, Mario, that wasn't all the missed challenges. No, no, no. You know? No, no. I'm just saying they're not all. Yeah. He's not swinging and missing all of them. Right. I, I'm very curious as far as how much control McDermott really has on the sidelines because he seems and he talks very much like he's, you know, in control at all times. But sometimes things get going and the game just moves fast that day. Right, I think as a head coach, the game can go really fast for you because you're not really in control of anything. McDermott's been in control of that defense in Carolina for years. He's had control, and he's that's it. From now, the booth? No, no, no. I'm just speaking as far as he had a role to do. He was a stay in your lane. You're a defensive coordinator. Well, this is your job requirement. Well, now I'm as a head coach, you need to you need to widen your palette to the things that you need to pay attention to. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. You can get a little hyper-focused on something that maybe shouldn't deserve all your attention at that time. Okay, I, I think there's a fair amount that goes into being a head coach that is trial and error. Yeah. I don't think you can learn how to, how to be better at stuff like that. I think that he's picked uh, Reed's brain enough. To know certain things about the sidelines, but I don't remember Reed ever being in a booth. I, I think Reed was Reed. always on the sidelines. Yeah, I can't read. I remember so Reed being in a booth either. The initial transition from from McDermott coming down from the booth, mm-hmm. where he was, he, he just just focus on defensive coordinator. That's what you do. That's it. Boom. That's what you're gonna do. He was up in the booth. Now he's come down to the sideline. Now he's the head guy in the sideline. So everyone's looking to get the answers. Where he was one of the guys saying, "Oh, what's Reed gonna do? Or what's Rivera gonna do?" I'm up here. Right. Doesn't matter. Uh, so, in that respect, he has some adjusting to do. Mm-hmm. And those are the improve. I think that's what Daniel Garvey's is trying to get to. What are some of the things he needs to get? He needs to improve on clock management. Is definitely one of those. And yeah. If he comes from Reed, it's gonna it's gonna be scary. The other thing is, you're an overseer over there. I mean, there's not really many. I, at least I don't see, like you said, I don't see a lot of adjustments he's making on the sidelines mm-hmm. with, with certain things. Rather than other than taking over week two for Frazier and calling plays, yeah, I don't. I haven't seen him really do much. Right, you never see him grab the quarterback and say, "Hold on, let me walk you through this." Right, you I never, never seen see him go up to Dable or say so. No, yeah, exactly. You, you really see them separate. But again, you know, we're just looking at sideline camps. Right, I'm not. My whole focus is not just watching Sean McDermott on the sideline. No, but I went to the game. I went to a game last year and I was watching him. I, I would I watched the things you can't see on television. Uh-huh. Mostly the inner line play. I right. love watching the inner line play. Um, but like he's almost sitting over there like Jason Garrett capping, clapping a bunch of time, you know. I mean, it's the sign of, you know, a good manager is do you let the people you hire do their job, right? Yeah. That's that's don't part. micromanage me. Right. Okay. Yeah. Are you gonna plan on shoving the whole rest of that donut in your mouth? I was thinking about it. Listen, man, we can't lose any subscribers around this place. 
I think if we didn't lose any from the rain episodes. Yeah, that's true. I think we're all right. All right, that's fair. For me, when we talk about McDermott, the one thing that he needed to focus on this this offseason was getting his team in better position to stop failing at third downs. His team was atrocious at third down efficiency, and they were atrocious. Offense at, at his, uh, No, offense. Uh, and they were atrocious at uh, first down efficiency, which is when you or drive efficiency, which is when you get a drive when you get a first down on a drive. Mm-hmm. That's all it takes to be quote unquote successful in the NFL is to get a first down on every drive. If you can get a first down on every drive, you're eventually going to move and you're going to use up some clock. You're going to control a little bit more of the field. You're going to win the field position battle. You need to get first downs on every drive. Mm-hmm. And the Bills were terrible in that stat last if year. If you plan on being a defensive team. You have to win the field position. Right? Absolutely. Field position is is key to winning football games. And there, the games that the Bills walked away with, like the games that they were clearly going to win, uh-huh. are games where they were in charge of the field the whole time. They won the field position battle the whole game. So, we talked about the Patriots. Yeah. Many times. Yeah. So, the fact that it seems that McDermott is going to be trying to play a throwback old school style of football does that give him an advantage in 2019 or See, is it a disadvantage? I don't think it's an old school throwback style of football. I disagree with you there. You look at what you brought in I still think that this team is going to try and throw the football. Do they have to run? Absolutely, of course they have to run. But I meant to win defensively. Right. That's what I mean. You don't think they're going to try to win defensively? No, I think they're going to try and win defensively, but the old school throwback football is let's run the ball 65 times a game and then let's hope we get an interception on one of the 12 pass attempts that the other team throws. Like, that's throwback style football. We're not, I don't think we're there. I don't know. Because you got to think, you kick off to the Chiefs, Mahomes is going to try to score within under three minutes. Yeah. They're going to score. Yeah. It depends on when they're going to score. Right. McDermott, you're like, let's get a couple first downs, pin them deep, mm-hmm. let's see if our defense can hunt, mm-hmm. and then we'll get another possession. Maybe we'll get a field goal out of it. You know, and already like eight minutes are off the clock. You know what I mean? All that's he may be playing. I think he may be playing a different style of football than because he's not going to play read ball. He's going to play McDermott ball. Well, and unfortunately, at this point, even though we're two seasons entering three seasons deep now, we still don't know if that works. No, because he's either been blown out. Right. Or they win by, like you said, a wide margin. Which right. Which means we can't see his clock management. No. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, it's funky how this how this team has gone the last two seasons. It's really tough to get. Huh, you ready for this? It's really tough to get a read on McDermott. See what I did there? That's how you end a segment, folks.